Hey guys, today's video is going to be my long overdue glutes workout. Hi, this is me, Bonnie. I've definitely made some glute progress. Can even see when I do my back exercises here in this video. Ever since I competed for NPC Bikini, I have changed my glute regimen to not only include heavy lifting, but also some lower weight, slower tempo uh, glute activation, which does seem to help. I'm also going to answer Olivia's question in this video at the end. First exercise is pause reset barbell hip thrust with a three second pause at the end. So pause at the bottom and you're basically restarting the movement so it makes it tougher, three sets of six. These videos were from I think June 10th, so shortly after the bikini competition when I was still very weak and I wasn't allowed to lift heavy weights for four months. And recently I have now uh, gone up to 315 pounds for these. Next is barbell hip thrust with one and one fourth rep and continuous motion. So sets of 12, 10, eight, and six. If you do these right, your butt should actually be burning and on fire just after the first two exercises. Since I have this set up already, I like to do glute ham raise. And I superset this with V-ups because I still hate working abs. And now, recently, I've actually started doing um, toes to bar in between and not taking any break at all. So literally, glute ham raise, toes to bar, straight to glute ham raise. And so my abs are actually the rest period after the glute ham raise. These next two exercises, I started off separately, but now it's gotten a little easier, so I do it as a superset. So deficit dumbbell Bulgarian split squat. You put a plate or something to put your foot on so that you can go deeper, and ideally, you should go down slower and pause at the bottom if you can. Next exercise is a single leg foot elevated on anything, a dumbbell, a, you know, a step or something, glute bridge and you can use a dumbbell or a plate to make this a little tougher and then if you really want to make it tougher do this as a superset right after the last deficit uh, dumbbell Bulgarian split squat. Recently that exercise has gotten a little easier so now I actually do the deficit split squat using the Smith machine superset it with the single leg uh, hip thrust. So you can alternate with these if the first one gets too easy or you just want to switch things up. Next is a variation of back squats, one and one fourth rep. For eight reps, six reps, and four reps. So I am not doing a lot of weight here at all. I think I'm only up to like 55 pounds still for four reps. And it's interesting because I'm not letting my ego get the best of me. At my best, it was like 225 pounds, uh, slightly above parallel. And now I'm not trying to, you know, really get to super heavy squats, but I'm doing all these weird variations like paw squats, eccentric slower, you know, lowing down squats, and these one-on-one -on -one fourth rep squats. And I'm slowly increasing my weight, which will be really interesting to see how this type of, uh, rep variations is going to help my ultimate regular squatting, if that makes any sense. Smith Machine One Leg Squat. I absolutely love these. These were also a staple exercise when I was doing the NPC Bikini Competition Prep. Sometimes if I'm super gung-ho and feeling like a bionic superwoman, uh, I'll actually do another exercise. There's already tons of exercises, guys, uh, where I am doing walking lunges either before or after these one-legged squats. And I'm happy to say that I've uh, really worked my way up and I think I started at like maybe 35, 40 pounds and now I'm back up to 60 pounds for eight reps walking lunges. My best was 65 pounds, so almost back to my normal strength there. Cable standing diagonal glute kickback. Three sets of 12 each side. You wanna go a little lighter so that you can have a little one second pause at the top and feel it. So I'm only doing like 17.5 pounds here. And again, these got a little easier, so now I like to superset these, if I have energy, with the side abductors. And in this particular video, I was super bloated this day from a lot of sodium the day before. So salty popcorns, watching movies, beef jerky, 
Um, I know I did not actually weigh 140 pounds this day, but that was what the scale weight said and that was my goal to not reach over that. But I have been averaging about 133 pounds and I think the day before I was like 135.6 pounds. So it was crazy. I basically gained like four pounds or six pounds in a matter of two days. And clearly I didn't actually gain six pounds of fat. But I definitely want to talk about this in a future video where uh, I show my progress since competition prep and how I'm maintaining and I'm doing these uh, monthly progress photos. Lastly, dual elevated knee banded body weight hip thrust, three sets of 20. So here I forgot my band, but usually you want to put a band around your knee area right above it. Uh, it'll help with your abductors. And I'm doing body weight here, but now I do 25 pounds to really feel it. Otherwise I'm doing like 50 reps and I'm still uh, not completely, you know, glute burn yet. Come on, Aliana, don't you like your hat? <laughs> no? <laughs> you don't like And that's it for my super mega glutes workout. Uh, this is another exercise that I really liked from NBC uh, bikini competition rep. Basically doing a glute bridge with your heels on a medicine ball, focusing on the lower part of your glutes going up and down a little slower. And you know, you can also work your glutes at home, ladies by using bands. So I actually do some band glute works on some days that are not my full glute days. Uh, here, for an example, since I already had such a massive workout, believe it or not, sometimes I still have energy to do more band work or more glute work. So here it is basically with fire hydrants. Um, it actually feels better when you use a lighter band because then you can fully extend and kind of squeeze at the top and get full range of motion. And right after that, this is like a triple set where you do three exercises in a row. You wanna do wide stance, kind of um, lower pulsing sumo squats for 30 reps, and then do regular squats for 10 reps. And you could do this, I usually do about two rounds of this with um, 90 second rest in between or 60 second rest in between, or, or you could do three if, if you still have any energy left. All right, guys, that's my glutes workout. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up if you want to see more of my workout videos. And stay tuned for a ton of videos on my list that I still have to get to. So now I want to answer Olivia's question. First question, do you find your prep stage lean body or off-season body more attractive? Do you like being tiny and lean or do you like to have meatier boobs and booty? So <laughs> it's funny about the meatier boobs and booby, right? Because when I was doing figure prep, we always had like an RIP butt uh, phase where you just have no butt at all. So definitely do not like the super skinny skeleton-like look. Uh, I do like the lean body look. You know, there's a certain time when it's, um, you're not at the very, very end of your prep that you look nice and lean and not too skeleton-like, which is nice. And the off season, I mean, it depends on where you are in your off season, right? If you're doing a muscle building phase, you may be a little bigger and not as lean. But uh, I like the athletic lean body fat percentage of like 15% would be ideal. Uh, in the past, I think I've been more around like 16%. And I do like the smaller look that I have now. So I am currently going through another transformation, which is, you know, stay smaller at a size like four or six versus my previous size six. Um, get my strength back and get stronger so that could be interesting um, definitely to answer your question leaner and a, a little bit tinier off-season but not skeleton 
skinny, right? Skinny is horrible. <laughs> Lean is the word. Uh, my, my friend Cindy always makes fun of me for that. So let's see, question number two, what are the symptoms as you get leaner? Do you feel hungry, cold, tired, emotional, get prep brain? Yes to all of that. You definitely get hungrier. It depends on what you're prepping for. So when I did bikini, I got hungrier much more than I did when I did NBC figure because I was eating more calories, right? So obviously if you're doing a prep for a smaller physique, you're gonna get hungrier faster. Uh, also depends on what you're eating beforehand and how drastic of a change it was. So if you were eat, if you like, I have a friend who's used to eating very little, and so when she did prep, she was like, "I'm getting so much food," and really she wasn't, but she wasn't hungry because it's what she was used to. Whereas I was starting at like 2,500 calories and had a humongous like 500 calorie drop just like from the beginning, and so yes, I definitely got hungry. Um, cold. The coldness definitely kicks in when your body fat gets a lot lower because you just don't have that fat to keep you warm. And in general, I kind of get cold fast anyway. So yes, tired, absolutely. Especially if you're going to the gym like three hours and doing massive amounts of cardio after you're already trying to train intensely. So some competitors will do like two hours of cardio a day. I forget what mine was, up to like an hour and um, our like 45 minute sessions two times a day like or trying to put all in one session crazy emotional definitely there's um some talk about how they should do videos on significant others competitions co competitors significant others because they have to deal with the emotional crap where basically we get bitchy right <laughs> uh thankfully I think I've gotten a lot better each prep, so that was me in the beginning, but over time, I didn't really get as emotional. But that, of course, varies based on person. Get prep brain, uh, this makes me think of like pregnancy brain, but yes, I could definitely see, and I have experienced a little bit of that, right? Just because you're tired, you're hungry, you're like depleted, emotional, like you're just not at your 100%, so absolutely some prep rain uh, and noticeably so because afterwards I was like a whole different person tons of energy so happy and all over the place lastly does being leaner affect your ability to lift weights did your strength go up during prep I would say yes to a degree but it doesn't mean that your strength always goes down I've definitely had times where I've gotten leaner and my strength has actually gone up. But in general, in general, your strength does go down. I do remember being surprised, oh, oh my gosh, how can I be getting stronger as I'm getting leaner? So it's possible, but in general, your strength does go down for sure. All right, hope that answers your questions. I was a little long-winded there. If you're looking to lose weight, lose fat, build lean muscle for that shapely toned look, and change your body composition, improve your metabolism, then check out my Eat Not Diet's six-week peak body accelerator program by going to eatnotdiet.com slash peak body.